Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to build on our knowledge of, you know, solving a system of equations, but we're moving from two variables now to three variables. And so, a lot of work, but it's very doable if you follow things in a systematic way. Now, in particular, the, the approach that we're going to use here is elimination. That is the, uh, the style that we're going to use in order to solve this particular system of equations. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So you can see right here I have my three um, equations here. The reason I have three is because I have three variables. So every time you add a variable, you add another um, line or another equation to the model. And so basically this is kind of like modeling something that happens in three-dimensional space. So you have the x and the y coordinates and also the z coordinates. So we have here 2x minus 4y plus 2z equals 6. 4x plus 2y plus 2z equals 8, and 6x plus 8y plus 6z equals negative 2. So, since I'm doing elimination, there's many different ways that I could approach this, but my goal right now is I want to eliminate y. If I can eliminate the y variable, primarily if I can eliminate the y var variable from two of these, I'm able to take that new condensed version of the uh, equation, if you will, to solve for something else. Now that might not make sense right now, so it's better to demonstrate this. And so let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these first two equations right here, and I'm going to, to eliminate, I'm going to eliminate the y variable. And what I will do is very simply this. Here I have a positive two, here I have a negative four. And so what I do is, is that if I can multiply this second equation by 2, I will now have a positive 4. And then I will add these two equations together. When I add positive 4 and negative 4, they will cancel each other out. And I'll be able to eliminate my, uh, my y variable here. So that's what I'm going to do first. So let me go ahead and draw this for you down here. Uh, we got 2x minus 4y plus 2z equals 6. And now I'm going to multiply the second one by 2. So I'm going to put the 2 out here. And then inside I'll put the 4x plus 2y plus 2z equals 8. That'll be also in parentheses. And I'll put the 2 out here. Now I distribute the 2. So I end up with, I end up with 8x. And then I end up with uh, plus 4y. Then I end up with plus 4z. And it equals 16. Now, what I do now is, it's not that complicated. I just put my, oh, excuse me. I put my 2x minus 4y. I'm taking this equation right here. Taking this equation right here, 2x minus 4y plus 2z equals 6. Now I add these together. So what happens is, is that the y's cancel out. And so if I write my answer over here, since I'm running out of space, I will end up with the following. I will end up with 10x. Where did the 10x come from? It came down here from 2x plus 8x. And then I'll end up with uh, plus 6z equals 22. That is what I have so far. 10x plus 6z plus 22. Now, what I'm going to do now is, is that I'm going to cancel out the y again. But this time, I'm going to use the first equation and the last equation. And this time, I'll multiply the top equation by... Oh, um, by, uh, let's see here, by 2. That's what I will do. So let me go ahead and show you that. And so I just draw a line right here to try to keep things as, as sane as possible. <laughs> and so now I have uh, 2x minus 4y plus 2z equals 6. That's what I have. And then I have my bottom equation. I have 6x plus 
8y plus 6z equals negative 2. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply this top equation right here. Multiply this top equation by 2. So if I multiply this by 2 over here by 2, oh man, this is tough. Multiply this guy by 2 as well. I now have the following. I have 4x minus 8y, that's what I really wanted was that 8y, plus 4z equals 12. And then below that, I still have my original third equation, 6x plus 8y plus 6z equals negative 2. All right, so when we combine everything, you guys probably have an idea of what to expect now. The, eight, the negative 8y and the positive 8y cancel out, and I'm left with 10x plus 10z equals 10. So we were able to eliminate the y. Now we have two equations that have two variables. And so now we can solve for a regular old fashioned system of equations. We have this guy right here up at the front, this 10, 10x plus 6z equals 22. And then we have this guy right here, 10x plus 10z equals 10. And so in the next step, we take this like so. Let me go ahead and move to another screen here. So I have my 10 x plus 6 z equals 22 and then I also have my 10 x plus 10 z equals 10 now I can't combine these just yet because you would think, oh, 10x and 10x, I can combine those. No, one has to be a positive 10, the other has to be a negative 10. So what I will do here is I will take this second equation, this 10x plus 10z, and I will multiply it by negative 1, like so. And then I get the following, as you could probably already tell. So the 10x, so I get the negative 10x, excuse me, let me make this clear. So 10x plus 6z equals 22 and then now I get negative 10x minus 10z equals negative 10 that's what I get and so my 10x's they excuse me my 10x's they combine they, they perish if you will and then I get the following I get negative 4z equals 12. And you know, this is basically solving for an equation divided by negative 4. And now we know that z equals negative 3. So we saw one dimension of the three dimensions. We're almost done here. Now we take this knowledge that we have of z and we plug it into one of the existing equations that we already had and we can just solve for the one left over. So that might sound mysterious, but again, I'll give you an example to try to clarify things. So let me go over here, try to draw a, a nice little neat line to try to separate things. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take this 10x plus 6z equation right here, and I'm going to plug in the negative three and then I can solve for x. That's what's going to happen here. So I have 10x plus 6 and inside that the negative 3 equals 22 and you can see things are picking up in terms of how fast we're able to do things so 10x minus 18 equals 22 and let me just you know wrap this up now and so we add 18 to both sides and then we end up with 10x equals 40 and then we divide both sides by 10. 
and we can clearly see that x equals 4. Two dimensions are now completed. Now, to finish this up, I take one of the original equations that had all three missing variables. I plug in these two values that I now know, x and z, and I'm able to solve for y. So we will do that on the next screen. So here we go. We're going to do, uh, let's see here, 4, 4. We're going to take the second one. Let me just rewrite it because it's been a while since we've seen it. 4x plus 2y plus 2z equals 8. That was our original equation. Now, here we go. Uh, 4, let me draw this in a different color. It helps it stand out. So... Uh, let's see here. How about this? Um, excuse me. There we go. So now we have 4. And now x, if you remember, our x was 4. And then plus 2. We still don't know what y is yet. That's what we're trying to solve for. Plus 2. And we know z is negative 3. And all this equals 8. So again, this not too complicated what to do here. So now we have 4 times 4 is 16 plus 2y minus 6 equals 8. Again, not that deep. And so the 16 and the minus 6, that becomes 10 plus 2y equals 8. And so, of course, we subtract 10 from both sides. This is basic. problem solving basic equations here and now we're left with 2y equals negative 2 divide both sides by 2 excuse me by 2 and we get that y equals negative 1 so if I had to show you all the answers I would say that our line our, our, our four our three equations if you will they intersect at 4 negative 1 and negative 3 x y z a lot of fun there and a lot of work let me close out my parentheses so you can see here that in this video we did something really complicated <laughs> we had to try to solve for a system of equations and this involves first using the system using the the strategy of elimination is that you take two of the equations and you try to eliminate one of the three variables so in our example i eliminated the y variable you, re, you eliminate that and then you have a new equation up here at, at the top where one of the variables is gone. You then repeat this process by taking uh, a different combination of these two, uh, two original equations and you eliminate the same variable again. And you're left with two, two equations that have only two, um, two variables, two unknowns. When you do that, then you solve for a regular system of equations as you can see here where again we use substitution the second time not to remove the y variable because he's already gone but to remove the x variable and by removing the x variable you're able to solve for the z the, the, the one that's left over we eliminated first y and then we eliminated z and after you eliminate y and z uh, you're able to solve for of course um x let, let me slow down here so what we did was that we eliminated x when we eliminate x and we eliminate y we're able to solve for z that's what we got down here let me make sure this is clear and then once you're able to solve for z you take one the refined the refined uh equation where you only had two variables and you plug in the one variable that you know to solve for the other variable that you eliminated previously which in our case was the x variable so that's what's trying to happen that's what's happening here and so once you do that you plug in z um, for the for that second variable you can solve for X and so now we knew the answer to Z and we also knew the answer to X once we knew Z and X it was just a matter of going and plugging those numbers in to solve for Y which is the last thing that we did so basically what happens here is that the first variable that you eliminate is the last one you often get the answer to and then the second variable that you eliminate that's the second one you get the answer to if you will and so the last one that the, the variable that is not eliminated becomes the one you get the answer to first. And then the second variable that you eliminate becomes the second variable that you get the answer to. And the very first variable that you eliminate is the last one you get the answer to. That's kind of what's happening in the big picture here. And so once we knew all that, we can now say 
in our three-dimensional situation here where these um, these equations will intersect if you were to actually try to graph them in three dimensions which is for us at four negative one and negative three so I hope this was useful for you I want to thank you for watching my name is Darren Thomas I'm the director of educational research techniques take care